mostly cloudy tonight, a low around 41. Cloudy tomorrow with a chance of showers between 8 and noon. And a high near 52, we'll see a low around 35. Friday, it's going to be mostly sunny. We see a high near 48, a low around 32. Saturday, sunny, a high near 55, a low around 38. We are currently sitting at 37 degrees under a sunny sky here in downtown Rochester. And uh, I teased it, and it, it's time now. Ryan Johnson's here. Yes. Off tour. <laughs> Never on tour, I think. Oh, okay. At least not this Brian Johnson. The oh. other Brian Johnson, maybe. It's, it's, it's a nice, brisk day out there. It is. It you walked here. It kind of feels like Halloween, doesn't it? Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> hey. Hey. 55 Saturday. I'm okay. excited for that. The question that, is, is there frost on the pumpkins? No. I didn't see any this morning. No. <laughs> I like that. That means we're not going to see that white stuff Saturday. Hey, either. there you go. It would be a nice day for trick-or-treating. So. Yes. Well, we've got a lot of things going on at the Foundation. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, I know it's the, the middle towards the end of October, almost November. So uh, one thing that comes up at this time of year is the idea of year-end giving. If folks are sitting down and, and looking, a lot of times they'll be looking at tax concerns or uh, maybe make some, some donations for commitments that they've considered throughout the year. Um, now is the time to do that. I always encourage folks, well, if you're, if you're thinking about giving, um, now would be a good time to talk to your tax advisor to look at um, what the tax implications would be because there's a lot of times where you can save yourself a considerable amount um, of taxes if you make a donation um, and so that's an opportunity this year we've had a very unique situation where um, folks that do not itemize if they claim a standard deduction on their taxes um, they can give three hundred dollars and still receive tax credit for that Ooh. so even if you're somebody that itemizes keep that in mind that you have that three hundred dollars sitting out there that can that can help locally and also um, help reduce your tax burden so um, that's a uh, we don't I've been asked a couple times is that going to happen next year and the question is I have no idea <laughs> um, that's that's something that um, was added this year um, it's possible but um, I wouldn't count on it I guess is the best answer that I can give you at this point so but if you are looking at, at helping something or uh, maybe helping an organization or a cause in the community there is that three hundred dollars that we know uh, through the end of this year. So um, a great opportunity to be able to help out locally and um, also receive some benefit on your taxes. Um, something that I wanted to mention, a couple things that we've got going on. Um, of course, we've been talking about the United Way and the grant that they have received through Lilly Endowment and Indiana United Ways. Um, their ERI, Emergency Relief Initiative grants, um, are still available. So if you have questions about that, uh, that's open to nonprofits in the community. I'm really looking at focusing on um, COVID related needs. Um, and we're hearing from a lot of providers that the needs are increasing now. A lot of the programs that have been helping up to this point have maybe expired or um, are reducing the ability to help. And so um, a lot of these organizations are seeing a significant increase in needs. So, um, if you're one of those organizations that's looking at frontline services, um, reach out to United Way here locally. Um, Jenny Moriarty is the director. Her direct line, 223-8929. Um, give her a call um, with questions about that. Um, you can find the applications actually on the Community Foundation website, okay. um, nicf.org. Um, and look on the, the Fulton County Grants page. There's information, the application is actually there. It's a, a pretty simple application. Um, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Jenny or to us at the foundation. We'll, we'll help you work through that process. Um, something else that I've mentioned um, a few times is Charity Tracker. Um, that's a software database that helps us share and collaborate between nonprofits in the community. Um, because of the ERI grant, um, we've been able to offer that um, to Fulton County area nonprofits um, at no cost um, for the next couple of years. So um, we're hoping that that is beneficial and, and gets used by local organizations. Again, if you have questions about that, give United Way, give us a call. Um, we talk you through the process. Um, 
but the, the goal with that is to be able to help collaborate between organizations, provide better services, um, and more efficient services not only for the organization but also for um, the client that they're helping out. So um, the other thing we've got coming up, um, service providers meeting, we've been doing these on a monthly basis. Normally we have them on the first Tuesday of the month, but this um, in November we're actually moving that. Um, so I'll be sending out information later today about that. But um, our next video conference will be on Tuesday, November 10th at 2 p.m. If you haven't been getting an invitation for that, let me know and I'll make sure and get you added to that list. Um, just a good time to share information with other organizations. Um, if you've got something going on, if you've got needs, um, it's, it's another one of those ways that we can collaborate and help um, serve more folks in the community. So, um, again, that's Tuesday, November 10th at 2 p.m. Um, if you don't get an invitation for that and you'd like one, um, shoot me an email, Fulton at NICF.org, and I'll get you added to the list to, to send out information. Um, and even in the past when we've had those meetings and had information passed along, and I try and pass that along to the rest of the group. Um, so even if you can't make the meeting at that specific time and you have some information you want to share, um, I appreciate all the, the folks that send us that information. We try and get it out to the concerned parties and um, go from there. So the other thing, I know it's I know it's still a little over a month away, but a big thing coming up Giving Tuesday. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Um, of course, as with everything that has happened this year, we're going to do it a little bit different. And as, again, as everything has happened this year, plans are still subject to change. But at this point, um, we're planning to do Giving Tuesday, which is going to be Tuesday, December 1st. Um, the idea is we've had um, things like Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, although that's changed. Who, yes. would, who would have thought that that <laughs> would change the way that it has? So yeah, um, if you if you're going to do your shopping, don't do it on Thanksgiving because those stores are going to be closed. Yes, they are. Um, but um, so you have you have um, Black Friday, and then something that, that the chamber here has done a wonderful job. Small Business Saturday. I know they're making plans for that. So um, just a plug for that if you're. If you're interested in that, keep your eyes open for some information coming out from the chamber. Um, support our local small businesses. Um, a lot of them have have worked through difficulties and and really um, come through. And and like I've already said, everybody figured out a new way to do things. Yep. Our small businesses have been resilient. So so make sure you support those. And then. You have Cyber Monday, which that'll be interesting to see too. Because I'm sure that's going to Black see Friday, huge Cyber too. Monday. I don't know. Yeah. If we we may already be seeing Cyber Monday. I'm not sure about that. I know. <laughs> I a think every day is Cyber Monday now. <laughs> it is. I think I've, I've had a couple of conversations with folks saying, "Well, I've really, I'm trying to get my Christmas shopping done by Thanksgiving." So, so, and I know a lot of stores have shifted that as well. So, um, but then Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, this year it happens to fall on December 1st, and the idea is to um, celebrate um, the impact that local giving and, and giving around the world um, has had. This is this will be, um, I think, the fifth year that we've celebrated Giving Tuesday um, in Fulton County, and it's just a time for us to celebrate everything that we've done. Um, so this year um, we're doing it a little bit different. We're going to do it kind of a drive-through style. So, and, and like I said, this is still subject to change, but this is the plans as we know it at this moment. Um, so we're going to be doing a drive-through um, style Giving Tuesday. Um, we'll have staff available at the office starting about 10 a.m., um, go to 5.30 that evening. Um, if you come between 11 and 2, we're going to have box lunches that we're going to hand out as a thank you to, to donors. So um, please feel free to stop by and and as we've done in the past WROI will be there yes we will we're working on getting some interviews set up so you can listen to WROI and hear about some of the good things um, we'll have some other information that we'll be passing out some goodies um, some thank yous um, we'll also probably have some information um, online if you can't make it and want to celebrate virtually with us um, kind of a recap of the past year, um, celebrating some of the things that we've done. Um, 
supplements. So listen to WROI. Um, I think you guys are planning to be there somewhere around the noon hour. So Yeah, uh, I might get there a little closer to 11 just, yeah. just so I can... Uh, Get some of that delicious food there you, that go. you guys always yes. have. You always have good food. That's got to like make sure you're well fed before we <laughs> put you to work, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that that's something that that will be exciting, and um, and we're really giving Tuesday as a way for us to say thank you to the donors um, that have made an impact. And this year it's been interesting. Um, we've had really great support from the community. Um, so this this year in particular, a thank you to to everybody who's made. The grants possible that we've been able to make this year so um, and something that's a little bit different from the past years I know the past few years we've had uh, matching funds for our community funds um, of course part of that has been um, thanks to Lilly Endowment for uh, some of the initiatives that they've provided but this year we're switching it up a little bit we're actually going to be providing some matching for um, the Promise Indiana 529 program that we have going on in the county. Okay. Um, and I think, I'm, I'm hoping next month we'll have a little bit more information, maybe a, an interview with the with the individual that leads that. But basically the idea is those 529 savings account allow um, parents, grandparents, family, friends to help children save for college. So if you start one of these accounts when a student is a kindergartner or even before then, um, you can add to that and it builds up um, kind of like the endowments that the foundation works off of. There's earnings, um, so that money grows. And then when that student is ready to go to college or maybe not even go to college, maybe getting some training or a certificate program, um, something education related, they can use those funds for that. So um, we're looking at, um, at providing some matching to support that program. Um, in our community as well. So um, I'm going to throw out a, a website, FultonCountyPromise.org, um, if you're interested in that. Um, Betty Martens is the coordinator. There's contact information. Um, I know we've had had quite a few students uh, participate in this, and this and the Fulton County Promise program is specifically for Rochester and Caston school corporations. Um, Tippecanoe Valley has been part of the um, Kosciuszko program, so we have all the all the county schools covered under under um, the Promise Indiana program, which is really neat. So, um, if you have questions about that, check out um, that FultonCountyPromise.org. Um, learn how you can help save for your students' education as we as you prepare for that. It's it's never too early to start saving for that. Okay. Um, because the earlier you start, the more you earn. Yeah. So the more more of your dollars will go. So, but again, um, if you want to find out more about that on Giving Tuesday, um, we'll have information available for that. Whether it's as you want to make a donation to help support the program, or um, would like more information about how one of those accounts can help um, students actually save for for funds. So, Giving Tuesday, December first, starting at 10 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Um, it'll be drive-through. Like I said, box lunch is available from 11 to 2. Um, we'll, we'll make sure and and have celebrate and say thank you to our donors in the best way we can, socially distance. So uh, hope hope everyone can stop by and, and find out some of the things that are going on. So yeah. um, what I wanted to talk about just here as we as we wrap up are a, a few recent grants that we've been able to make. Um, and some of these grants are available because of um, the fact that we've had um, extra matching dollars from Lilly Endowment and helped us grow our endowments. So um, when I started with the foundation a number of years ago, we were able to grant out, I think the first year I sat in on a grants committee meeting, we were able to grant about $45,000 for the whole year. Um, this year, looking at that, that number has grown to over $250,000. And that's... Yeah entirely because our community has supported these matching efforts and helped us create these funds. So it, it's kind of interesting when we look at, by the end of the year, we anticipate making at least four grants that are $20,000 plus. Um, and, that's, and that's just a part of what we've been able to do. But a couple of recent grants that we've been able to, to work with, um, the Richland Restoration Nature Park. And, and my goal is to, to 
describe this the last time and then start describing it as the Richland Restoration Nature Park <laughs> because this came from an old county landfill. Yes. And when I say that, people look at me kind of like, I don't know if I want to go to a park at a landfill. I can tell you that if you didn't, if you were not told that this was a landfill, you wouldn't know it's a landfill. They've been working on this. It's um, been interesting. I know um, the county commissioners worked on this for a number of years. Now the Fulton County Parks Department. Um, I, I think the idea was hatched in 2003. So that's been a few years ago. Just a few. We've been we've been working with the Parks Department um, since 2015 on this idea. Okay. Um, and they've been working with IDEM and um, and the county to get a clean bill of health. So that's that has happened. The the process of testing and making sure that the contamination is is taken care of is complete. So it's no longer looks like a county landfill. Like I said, you wouldn't even notice it if it was there. Uh, but this is this is the Richland Restoration Nature Park is located um, on 450 North um, between Old and New 31. Okay. So if you, if you think about where Ramco is, it's just yep. immediately west of that. Um, it's about a 60 acre property. Um, really neat. I've had the opportunity to walk through it a couple of times. And, um, even as it is right now, it's just a really neat property with some prairie spaces, with some wooded areas. Um, they're looking at adding some um, pavilions, so um, they're hoping by next spring to have pavilions available, um, having some walking paths. There's been a leadership academy group that's been working on a dog park. Um, future plans include things like a disc golf course as well, um, but it, it's just a really neat, a neat project and a neat way to um, really restore, as the name says, a property that may not have been used for much um, and turn it into something that's really neat. Yeah. So I think this is going to be one of the neatest parks that we have in the community. So um, congratulations to the, the Parks Department on everything that they've done so far. We're looking forward to, to what happens with that and we, we were able to provide a $20,000 grant for them to help with um, phase one of the project which will help get the, the park open um, and get some, some things like um, drives built, um, some ADA accessible um, parking and walks and pavilions and um, they they say they're going to build walking paths but there's already walking paths out there they've already <laughs> been working on this and so it's um, wonderful to see that and of course the Leadership Academy dog park project is coming up as well so so looking forward to using that in the near future again that's that's Richland Restoration Nature Park. Okay. Uh, really exciting. Another big thing that we've been able to help with was the Times Theater. This yes. is a project that's been going on for a number of years. Um, we were able to meet with their board earlier this year and provide them a um, matching grant opportunity of $25,000. And they were able, in just a matter of a couple of months, to be able to raise an additional $25,000 to match that. Um, and really the goal is to get the theater open. Um, it's not going to be everything done, but it's going to be open for events, and it's really a neat space. I mean, a little bit of work, and, and this is going to be a great asset for our community. So um, we're looking forward, and, and I know they'll be working on a couple of phases after this, but this will get the, the theater up and going. If, if you've not been in it, I know it's not open to the public right now, but right. Um, in the near future, I'd encourage folks to check that out because it's really, it's a really cool space. I'm looking forward to having events. Uh, I'm hoping that we can see some concerts in there and I'm hoping so. Things like that. It's just, it's really historic and and just even as it is right now, it's pretty cool. So yeah, check it out. Keep keep your ears open. We're looking forward to to that. Hoping that uh, that's available for us next year um, to use again. All plans are subject to change at this moment. But. Yes, they are. Um, and then another one that I wanted to mention was um, a grant to Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry. Um, we were recently able to grant $5,000 um, to that organization, and that came directly um, from the funds that we were able to help raise as part of the Radiothon that we did earlier this year with, with WROI's help. Um, and this is an organization that um, helps provide um, processed meat, so I say processed meat, 
Mm -hmm. It's not like the the canned stuff that you might right. buy at the store. It it's donated animals, whether it be hogs, uh, beef. Um, this time of year, um, deer. You have deer hunting going on, and so what happens is either a farmer or a hunter um, donates um, an animal, and then Hoosiers feeding the hungry helps at a local processor to be able to turn that into ground meat for a food pantry. Um, and this year, Fulton County, we've been able to help with two steers that we purchased, distributed to um, food pantries, and of course we had the meat shortage. Yeah. Um, and what happened then when mm -hmm. local processors filled up, um, Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry was able to help us get some slots at some local processors for these animals that instead of having to wait six months to have them processed, I think the longest one took about two weeks. Uh, oh, and, and got it to the food pantries when those needs were starting to arise. Because they were, they were telling us, they were saying, hey, we have these box meals that we're handing out, but part of the meal is ground meat, and we don't have any ground meat. So it's difficult for us to hand something out and give somebody something they can actually use. And so um, collaboration between, between the foundation, um, some local donor advised funds, and Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry and now their Emergency Relief Fund um, has helped meet this need with these with these ground meats to the food pantry. So um, thank you to everybody who participated in that um, Radiothon. Um, again, thank you to WRY for, for helping with that and, and these funds are being used to help um, those in our community that are less fortunate and be able to survive during these tough times. So, yes very wonderful so so that's those are the highlights that we've got going on right now at the foundation of course um, busy times like I, like I said end of year think about um, kind of your end of year planning if you haven't made a, a charitable gift uh, I'd encourage you to think about that if you're in the position to be able to make that $300 gift to a qualified charity it doesn't just have to be the community foundation but we can obviously put it to, to good work here in the community locally I'd encourage you to, to think about that. If you want to um, check out some of the things that we've done throughout the year, you can find us online, nicf.org. Um, we're on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, give us a call, 224-3223. And our office is, is usually open, although we're kind of keeping an eye on community health. So Absolutely. if you're concerned about that, don't hesitate to give us a call if you, if you want to stop by in person. Um, we do have space if folks are concerned about uh, dropping off a check. There's a couple of solutions. You can make a gift online at our website, or um, we do have a basket in our front entrance area that you can stay socially distanced from anybody, just drop something off. But you can always give us a call and say, hey, I, I have an idea, I want to talk to you about it, or um, we, we do have opportunities for video conference and, and things like that as well. So as we as things continue to change, don't hesitate to reach out. And we're still working for the community and um, appreciate everything donors have done to support our community in this really interesting. I, th I think that's the best word I can come yes. up with is interesting, interesting. time. So, Very interesting time. So, but that's, that is what we've got going on today. All right, well, Brian, thank you very much for stopping by. I uh, look forward to talking to you next month as we gear up for Giving Tuesday. All right, thanks, Paul.